Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I've got a, another special episode for you today because we're looking at a particular case study of one of my clients, one of my customers, Thomas, who's joining me now. Hi, Thomas. How's it going? I'm fine. Hi, I'm really, really happy to be here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining me. And Thomas has uh, basically went through my build a better bass trap and absorb replacement hacks course, the acoustic treatment essential bundle that you can get on my website. And he did such an excellent job with a tricky room. It's quite narrow. It's not the biggest room. The layout of the doors and the windows of a balcony isn't trivial. And he did such an excellent job. He really, it was smooth sailing for him, at least from my perspective. I will see what, what Thomas has to say about it in a second. But uh, I wanted to show you that because it's such a great example of what you can do even with difficult rooms, right? So we're going to go through that in a second. Before that, if you want to follow along in this process, if you want to see what the top level kind of steps are that Thomas went through following the course, then you can download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description completely for free. These are my five steps to treating a home studio and getting it to translate. And it's all in there, all the steps that Thomas went through and that we're gonna be talking about. So obviously the sweet spot, speaker positioning, the treatment with porous absorption, measurements, subwoofers, it's all in there. So if you wanna follow along and understand what Thomas actually went through, then make sure you download that. Also, I'm gonna be doing a spring launch of my Acoustic Treatment Essentials bundle very soon at a discounted price for my email subscribers. So if you're interested in, in the course that Thomas went through, you want to get that at a discount, make sure you sign up so you can get that when it uh, opens up very soon. So with that, Thomas, again, thanks for joining me. Um, maybe let's just start with who are you? Where are you? Uh, what What's the room that you're dealing with? What kind of music do you work on? Can you just kind of give give me, give me a background of, uh, of where you're coming from with all of this? Sure, I can do that. So I'm Thomas, I'm from Germany, Hamburg. And I started to do music, um, I think like 20 years ago, when I was in my youth, um, started to do hip hop um, with uh, my friends. I was a beat maker, they did the rap. And basically, after I left school, I uh, was in a, a, a dorm room, right, with other students studying computer science, all these things. And I actually already noticed I need to do something with acoustic treatment. But I was a student, I had not the money. And that's how I learned a little bit already, like, I think over t closely over 10 years ago, um, about the science of acoustic treatment. I was like visiting some forums and learned a little bit about acoustic treatment, but actually not really. There's a lot sure. of, let's say, voodoo. <laughs> and um, so I kind of waited 10 years, right? So um, now I am uh, have a full-time job um, and I've had a mini sabbatical where I thought, okay, this is now the dream I want to do. I heard about do it, uh, do it yourself. Um, so I looked up for rooms actually uh, around my t uh, uh, home because um, my girlfriend was not that happy with um, doing uh, it at, at home and what does it all mean? Um, which at the end, after I visited a lot of rooms, um, they all had quirks, it was far away. I would probably spend time not at home with friends, family and all this stuff um, that we discussed it to do it at home because it's also time uh, money safer you don't have to pay rent and um you just save time so of course um we i got okay for changing my office at my right. apartment um it has a, has some quirks um as yeah. Jesco already mentioned there's a door um on the left um there's a window a double doored window on the right and this is actually the long side um, there's also a, a, a the heating system in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, so I already, when I thought about treating the room, uh, how do I do that? Like everyone says, go to the long side and I can't place it. I can't leave the room. If I place it to the door side, I can't open the window. And I also don't, I can't corner it symmetrically. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Um, and basically I watched, um, I, I found out about Jasko's YouTube channel. Um, I 
watched some videos, I noticed that it was like profound, right? There's some theory. I'm also a theory guy. I like to go a little bit deeper and understand it. Um, but I also don't have a lot of like unlimited amount of time. The course looked like it is kind of like an all-in-one package from theory to building the things. And I don't want to spend time researching all of that on my own. I actually want to execute it. So I bought the course, went through it, and that was kind of like how the whole building journey starts, which we are probably going to talk now. Yeah, and hopefully. Can you can you give me a, um, a picture of what the room was like before you put the treatment in? How how long did you actually already work in the room before you put the treatment in? What was your experience like in the untreated room? Uh, so I sitting I'm sitting here for four years, also during mm -hmm. COVID time. Mm -hmm. I had Neumann speakers uh, already. And I was very sad that I never used them. It was, ah. it was like they're standing there, but um, it doesn't translate. I'm a very, very heavy reference listener for, for all the music in the car for many, many years. Um, and I just can't replicate it, whatever I do it. And it feels mm -hmm. very unsatisfying. So I was on headphones. Yeah. And basically it's too boomy, too washy. Um, you notice all the modes, dips, where's the bass. Uh, and when I'm in the, my living room, uh, my, my girlfriend has to s sit there and say, what's this bass? And <laughs> uh, so it was <coughs> unusable. And the, unfortunately, I also have to notice that it was a health thing, right? Um, I'm sitting here. I'm a software developer. I sit here with headphones all the day in meetings. And I just don't want to use the headphones again for music making. It's right. uncomfortable, um, and actually, I also had some some feelings of that. My ears close, mm -hmm. right, and and that I really can't listen anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, those are great reasons, and you're not the only one who's who's had that experience. I think uh, having speakers and feeling like you can't actually use them, and not ending up not using them because it's so unsatisfactory if you put them up. And then having to deal with headphones all the time, uh, which is great. Headphones work great, no doubt about it. But um, there comes a point where you just want to take them off and you just want to work on speakers, right? I tried it. Like I did all the the classic things you kind of read in the in forums, right? Like I, I built the Neumann once, and I tried to set up them without treatment in front of a um, double door window mm -hmm. with such meters and that equal triangle maybe mm -hmm. it works but it doesn't and then i yeah. send them back i tried it again i bought them again wow maybe maybe i do it here in the short wall i don't know but it yeah it did, it did not work out yeah. so i was very very unhappy and it, it actually led to me making quite like less music yeah i'm sure yeah it's so it's so uh disheartening that yes. you don't even want to feel like you want to sit down because you can't get into the flow of things, right? Yes. I mean, there's a reason why I finish all my videos saying, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. You know? Yes. There's a very um, fundamental reason why I keep saying that because that's ultimately why we're in this, you know? Yes. Uh, and so it's it's a complete deal breaker if you can't get to it. So yeah, I mean, you, you briefly mentioned the room already uh, with the double doors, uh, the, the how difficult it is to kind of set up. Um, what did you think as you were going through the course? When did you think, oh, okay, this is actually this might actually work? I mean, because it takes time and effort. You need to kind of dive in and pull through. You need to finish the thing before you actually get the end result. And it can be you. You have to believe that it's actually going to work. Um, so, like, at what point for you did the moment come where you thought, okay, I think this is actually going to work? Um, I think the first thing is the mindset of this 80% thing, uh -huh. right? Okay. Like 80% is enough. Um, I tried to do it in, in not only here with the studio building, but more and more also in other things. So this was really uh, motivating to hear that. Um, also understanding in the beginning of your course, understanding some of the fun fundamental principles that I could see, okay, I, I understand maybe the troubles in my room a little bit more where where there might be trouble. And I actually saw, I think, another case study, kind of like the okay. one we are recording here, where I saw, saw people, um, one person also being on a, on a, on a long side of a room. Um, 
which actually would enable me to be symmetrical here, right? Uh, plus that you also um, look on the listening position and if you have an auto room, that you go through the different axes. So this was of 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 a point where I said, okay, um, I guess I can try that uh, mm -hmm. with that mindset and everything is better than what I have now. Um, plus I'm fine with the compromises. Uh, and I think also one one thing was I mean you might see it here on the on this corner. If, if there's only b one base trap going over the heater, while the other side has like the double. Um, and it was also the me mentioned that okay, the, the more you have absorption in your room, the less you get out of putting more into it. So my thinking was here, okay, this probably does not matter. <laughs> so. Um, so these these were all like points which which um, told me okay, uh, I think this will be good. Yeah, uh, you will get something where you can translate you um, and and you are at home. So um. yeah, sweet, excellent. I mean, um, maybe let's let's before we jump in and talk about what the process was like of actually getting here, building the traps, planning the treatment, and all that. Um, can you give me a br brief overview of how much did you put in the room now? How much, how many panels did you build? Um, and how, how big is the difference subjectively now to you? Okay. I did the full package because I had a mini sabbatical. Uh, I had six weeks free time from my full-time job and it was like, okay, you do it once in a lifetime. Probably you can pay, take them to any apartment. So do it completely. So I built 20 absorbers. One is obviously because of that corner just in the, my basement, right? Sitting there for whatever apartment. Okay. Um, and <laughs> nice. I will move to, um, uh, which is really cool about the way you build your observers. You can just take them to the next apartment. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, basically, uh, yeah. So it's a huge difference. Um, it's from a... I did not have time yet to make music, but I listened. Like it's it's finished for one week now. I listened to a lot of music, and I actually can like I wanted to immediately go into my Ableton project and fix my problems. Yeah, it's kind of like the story I heard from other people, and hope to experience myself. And it was like that. Um, and basically, my brother uh, does techno for also many years. Does not have treatment. Listen to it, and he was also like, oh, I now see what's the problem in my mixes. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try it. Um, and for me, it was basically always too much bass. And I did not mm -hmm. understand why. Like, mm -hmm. why is it always too much? Is mm -hmm. it ear fatigue? Is it, I am I don't know. I, I It did not work out. So it yeah. works really well. Very direct sound. Um, I hear things which I did not hear before in tracks I listen almost daily. Mm -hmm. Um which is cool. I can learn a lot. So, so I did a lot of car referencing for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's like a new experience of uh, learning more about the intricacies of mixing. Yeah, yeah sweet. Maybe uh, also give us an idea of like what, what are things that are still confusing to you maybe at this point? Because it's like you said, it's only been a week. And I think that's really... Uh, so it's an interesting insight as well, right? Uh, the, the benefit of treatment really comes with time as you then improve your 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 mixing skill your 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 ability to to think in a kind of translation mindset to work in a translation mindset and a lot of the benefits only show up after six months a year so after one week it's 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 standard it's normal to still be confused about certain things to wonder certain things to notice things and think what am i going to do with this can you tell me a bit about what you find you're still unsure about at this very early stage now, having done all this? Low end bass. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's basi basically, I think it will be low end bass. So I also like I have a subwoofer. I bought it here. Um, so we can also talk a little bit about placement. Um, yes, but yes, please. Mm -hmm. I can change it, right? So I sometimes listen, I, I try to listen without uh, the, the subwoofer, just the Neumann, which go to 52 hertz. And it kind of feels from 60 hertz upwards, everything like punchy, it's there. I can hear everything, differentiate, direct, fine. Like a joy to listen to. 
um, really what I like to, and not not even weird. That was kind of like the thing I wanted to have it like this. Mm -hmm. um, below, it's I have had one phenomena where um, I really felt the sub bass on the left ear, not mm -hmm. even listening or hearing it, but physically like mm -hmm. feeling it even in the left ear while from a kick while it was not here on the right. So we talked a little bit about it. Maybe it's even some over pronunciation overall with the gain still on the sub bass, but that's something I'm, I'm, I'm really curious right now, um, how it will go when I start mixing, um, uh, and, 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 and working on my music, but I'm comfortable actually to go over compromise and even use different tools. Right. So, now I can I can turn it on, I can turn it off, I can pick up for a minute the headphones now because I'm not using it all the time. Um and I can use references. Uh this will be my, my way to, to 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 learn about this base, why I'm actually not afraid that it will be that big of a problem in the mm -hmm. let's say 30 hertz, right? Or <clears throat> 20 hertz, like this low space. Yeah. Um this this problem of the pressure from one side. Did, uh, does that still persist? Is that still going on right now? Uh, I think you mentioned before that. I've not tried it off yet. So uh, mm, this was when the, the, my equipment was not here inside the room. Um, I don't know. Uh, but the, I, the sub I, I, is still in the same spot? It's the, still the, same the sub is, stay, is uh, still in the same position. It's on okay. the right side of the table. And there was also a, a, like a phenomena when I positioned the, the subwoofer, which I, where I actually used also your YouTube videos with, okay. head, with head, I think, mm -hmm. together. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the middle, when I placed it in the middle under my table and on the left side, which is the side to the door, um, I got a like huge dip um, in the 40 to 50 hertz, like really, really huge. Um, so completely eradicated, like removed the frequency. I positioned it on the right side um, and it was gone, close to gone. So it was really um, impressive to see that 50 centimeters sometimes or a meter changed it completely. Um, it it is also the recommended position by Neumann when you look in the manual to put it on the light or left or the right side. They never mention it to put to put to the to the center, but I assume this is kind of like what the hearing it on the left side is kind of like the compromise I have to do, um, which actually I don't find that bad because now I have um, space for my feet. Um, I had to go very close to the wall because I'm on the long side. And um, from what I know, sitting in the middle, um, there's a lot of modes going on. So finding this guideline of 38%, there's not a lot of space when you sit on a long uh, place. So the speaker had to be placed completely on the wall. Um, I can actually touch the wall with my feet. Um, and... When I measured actually, actually also this, um, it really makes a difference. Like this, this much space and from the listening position here, like it's 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 a really huge difference. Um, but I could find the spot, so that was really really good. Um, I could find by the listen positioning test. Um, I know what happens from looking on the course when I move back and forth in theory, so I'm really happy with that. Right Sweet, now. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, sub subwoofers uh, can be can be hit or miss. Tricky, uh, tricky beasts, especially when they're as big as the Neumann sub. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm not surprised that you're happy to not have it below your feet anymore. And so it comes with uh, with certain other compromises, uh, having the luxury of not having to put your feet on it. Um, Maybe so, towards yeah. also that to 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 some myth busting maybe yeah, maybe i'm right here um i also looked okay do i stay with a small neumann or do i take the uh the, the mid, mid so-called mid-range speaker uh, the 310 um without a sub uh or do, do i take a sub because i have only 11 square meters right so it's a very tiny room uh 
in theory, it's too small. <laughs> so, uh, or just on the edge. Um, and uh, actually, I think you also had a YouTube video about that. Um, the the loudness and all these things, right? And the room, they do, it, the, the mathematical formula does not care about the loudness, right? So putting up a big subwoofer in this, this small room, I don't think that it is a problem. And also, I probably would not think to pay, place the 310 into that room. The only problem I had here is I'm very close to them. And this is where they, there's a trouble with these three way speakers. Yeah. Um, why I chose the subwoofer, which at the end, I think it should not be boomy. It should, you just, I think at the end, it should feel like you don't feel it. That's right. Yeah. So maybe let's take this uh, take this this moment and talk a little bit about what it was like actually building all these panels, putting them in the room. You already mentioned uh, before we started recording that you didn't have a large garage to uh, to put all this stuff and and work through it uh, and and work on it. You actually did this all in basically your large living room and and kitchen, if I understand that correctly. Um, so maybe to talk to me a bit about what what was it like going through the process of building the panels. Uh, did the course give you everything you needed? Uh, did you feel like you had enough support? Um, what were some of the, the more difficult parts maybe that were surprising? What was easy in the end that you didn't expect? T talk to me a bit about, about that, please. Okay. So, uh, kudos to you. The course is the only package I found after looking for theory and forums, all these things, where you get all in one. Hmm. So... Um, it goes on theory, it gives you a plan, it even gives you a shopping list, it gives you alternatives, the tools, how you build them. Yes, there are sometimes one or two points where there's a question mark, but you can ask in the Q&A section, you get an answer there. And at some point here, I also send out an email to Yesco. Um, you have a, like this one-time check, right, where I plan everything. You go give give it your feedback, do a check, and then you just go. So, uh, and the building itself on the before we go into the details, uh, it matched everything, right? So, it there were close to n n zero errors in the building thing. Nice. There is a little bit of um, measurement things which I had to change. Yes, but it was doable. Um, plus. Um, I actually modified it a little bit here, right? So, so I I colored them uh, the wood um, because there was a requirement that it looks good from other uh, people living here <laughs> in this apartment, um, which I can already say it quite kind of doubles the time you need for them to build, right? Because you need to like paint them, um, which is something you have to plan. So the building process was kind of in the detail. Um, I thought I plan like plan it really, really well, um, such that you don't have the trouble later when you are actually in it. And I think this is a very important advice. You also gave it in the course, um, to do that. So I actually, um, I had a mini sabbatical, six weeks of free time. So I used two to three weeks for planning, 3D modeling, um, going through the shopping list. Um, how do I have to cut it? Um, do I have all the tools? Um, where do I going to build it? How does this place look like? Um, where am I going to move all the furniture and stuff I had before in the office? There's a lot of side quests, let's call it like them, um, we had because we basically changed our apartment, right? So furniture had to move out. How do we change it? Do we have space in the attic? to store them are we getting rid of it or sell them um so some negotiation also about um coloring like giving also something to the other people in the apartment is something so we color worked on another room so my my girlfriend is more happy with getting also something so it's 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 quite a journey so the planning and buying is a lot and yeah. then the actual building was two weeks including putting them into the room. So mm -hmm. for 20 absorbers. Um, and as I said, I think you can do it in a week for 20 absorbers. 
was roughly between sometimes eight to 12 hours a day working. So it was quite intense, but it went very smooth, right? The planning yeah. and everything, like it worked out. I recommend from a working space to have at least a living room where you can actually build all these things. If you want to do the same thing like I did with coloring the the wood, you probably need um, a second place. Um, I was fortunate to go into the garage of the um, father of my girlfriend. Um, and also a place where you can store the work pool, right? So for 20 absorbers, it's quite like <laughs> a little bit of uh, space you need for storage. A wall of insulation material somewhere. Yes. Somewhere. Maybe you tell me, but what did you think was the hardest part about all of this? Was which was what was hard and what was surprisingly easy? Um, the building at the end was easy. I think. Mm -hmm. um, I never built anything <clears throat> in my life. Okay. Oh, me. really? It was the <laughs> first time I did something. Like that. Wow. I had the was fortunate enough to have help from my girlfriend's father. Um, he has obvious, like he has a lifetime experience of building and crafting things. Um, I would highly recommend to do it with two people. Um, it makes everything easier. Um, and if you have a friend or somebody in family who is a little bit more skilled, if you don't have the skill, um, also a recommendation. Um, the hardest part was actually putting the trigger to buy the things. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Mental block. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, because it's always a little bit of, yes, there's a lot of recommendation and you can kind of like um, go through the even sometimes measurements which you provide. If you are from Germany, you also live in Germany, um, you have a reference in the guide. If you're not in Germany, you have to look if you find similar materials and do more calculations. And I think the more absorbers you try to build, and I wanted to build 20, not just eight, um, the <coughs> more scary it gets of putting the trigger and, okay, I have now to buy like such amount of work wool, a lot of wood. What if you do some miscalculation? <laughs> um, and because there was a delay, right, for everything I had to order, there was like, okay, in two weeks, three weeks, and I have had a deadline, which was 1st of February, to be done. Um, there was not the option of, okay, I buy a little bit of everything and build it before I buy the big batch, right? So I had to re really rely that it works. And the most frightening moment for that was when I was cutting the wood. Um, I went to a shop where they cut the wood, and they told me, but you know that you will lose three millimeters because of a cutting, right? <laughs> Panic. And I was like, but I plant everything with one meter. So I like in the guy and I stood in front of this, this, this guy um, and, and thought, okay, so everything which relied that the one plank is one meter and which were a couple of parts now to be, ad be adapted in the moment. Um, I, listen to your advice to have a cutting list. So this is a piece of paper where you exactly diagram how you cut the pieces and have it visually. So because I had this in my hands, I was able to go through it. Okay, this changes to 991 millimeter. This changes to that. And everything went, went well afterwards. But I think this is kind of was for me the hardest part. Yeah, um, actually, with the buying and or logistics. Um, but amazing to hear that, uh, first of all, that you dared to do it, that you had the guts to jump in and do it. And uh, also, I'm glad to hear that the instructions that I provide in the course are good enough to help someone like you who hasn't done any woodworking really yet, because uh, that was one of the the goals that I set out to do as well, to 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 put the course together in a way, the instructions of building the panels so that you could do it uh, even if you don't really have experience, if you are if you are willing to do it, it's not hard, but there are certain things to watch out for. And we tried our best to really put those in there uh, so you don't fall into the big pitfalls. There yes. are obviously always small things that you're going to have to adapt yourself, that you're going to have to learn yourself. I can't show you 
I can't show you down to the last detail how to put a drill a drill into an electric screwdriver. Like uh, you know, there are certain things yes. that <laughs> obviously aren't in there. Um, but um, so I'm very glad to hear that uh, it worked for you. And also, um, kudos, well done. I mean, I basically said it also multiple time time as an anecdote to 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 the father. Um, uh, you notice that you have built quite some absorbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that yeah, the experience of probably doing uh, many mistakes also in doing it and um, finding like the optimal solution to build these and to be efficient, right? Um, yeah. Not cutting the rock wall and all these things. You notice it. And even he who was experienced in, in, in building these things and just looking on it and having his own idea how he would do that, said ah let's watch the video right <laughs> so what is the trick here and and these tricks are like valuable because it makes everything more efficient yeah and yeah. it works out super important yeah. and also fun and you can you trust in getting it done right because you yes. know further down the line if i run into a certain issue probably there's a video there that i can check out and find the solution for it you know yeah talk to me about about the cost of the whole thing. So you stain the wood, you colored and stain the wood. That's something that I talk about in the in the course, but I you I as a starting point I recommend not to do it because it's quite time intensive. Um, and also it raises the price quite a bit. Um, but yes. so having done that, tell me about how much did this whole thing cost for you, including the courses? How much did you invest in what you ha now have in the room? So I have not summed it up yet. I have just rough estimates. Sure, um, yeah. Because it was like, oh, here again, something, here's a small toy, toy, here a little bit of that and this. And customization, right? So customization was a big part here. Um, I guess for the 20 without labor costs, um, I will probably land around 2,000 to 2,200. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess in this ballpark. <clears throat> Um, wood is ex extremely expensive right now. Um, so this was expensive. Actually, coloring like um, is not that expensive. So for the 20, I paid with tooling 100 euros. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's more like the, okay, you need time for doing that, right? That's right. Yeah. So it feels like you built every absorber twice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I had some tools already here, so this I think was another maybe 100, 150 euros, which I saved. Um, buy an electrical, um, how do you call that? A screwdriver, yeah, uh, drill, electrical no, drill, yeah, that one, but the other uh, the one, stapler. Or, Stapler, yes, because that is like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I could not imagine it without an electrical one, actually. Sure. Uh -huh. um, uh, especially if you build 20 and not only 10. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, at the end, um, labor is probably the biggest cost if you That's right. um, value it and do the business calculation, let's That's say right. like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You can save money. So so in my circumstances, the calculation is like that. I took a sabbatical. I pay it on my own like goal, right? Um, I never do did woodwork. I probably le learn a ton about woodwork myself. So it's kind of like a double course. Um, I know the theory, go through all the process. You learn a lot about how acoustic also, like on a let's say amateur level, but a little bit already beyond. You learn a lot about your room, your quirks, and all these things, which is kind of what you pay with your labor cost, right? That's right. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. If you are, let's say, a freelancer, a software freelancer, right? I know how much they get per hour. I would probably get in the same ballpark, like buying these panels, without having the customization, right? So I looked into buying these panels, uh, but um, the slatting, right? Having a binary diffuser, uh, I could not got, get them. And I knew such a small room with 20 absorbers from your course, it will probably sound very dead and uncomfortable. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna just quickly jump in and say it's gonna sound dry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just because okay, I yeah. personally don't like the word dead uh, because it's so negatively charged. And uh, usually when people say the room sounds dead, uh, it's it's usually because they didn't g g take the right approach. Um, and you can do all of this without any of the, the diffuser fronts, no problem at all. It's going to be very, very dry. Yeah, And some people may say it sounds dead. Uh, but I just wanted to throw that in there because yes. I like to differentiate between dead and dry okay, because yeah. you actually need a dry room. And even with the, the diffuser fronts, if you do the measurements, you'll see that the reverberation time is very, very short. It is a very yes, dry is. room. Yeah, yes. It doesn't feel dry. That's the difference. Um, but um, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. Please continue. Yes. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. So from a cost perspective, I think like um, for me, it was worth it. Um, I learned a ton. I learned about intrinsic of my room. You could, Probably it helps me maybe in the next year years about knowing that. Um, and I had a sabbatical, so it was kind of like turning off a computer and doing something. So for me, it was totally worth it. Yeah. And uh, as, a, as a fun project as well, just to do something yes. worthwhile, invest in something that isn't computer based. Yeah. So if you, if you like, uh, if I would be do, doing freelancing, it would probably not worth being it because I would lose a lot of money for the time, the labor cost. But if you say, okay, I want to, I have a free time, I want to do that, it's fine. It's not, I just don't count all the money in every hour. Yeah. Um, uh, you save money from the, um, difference of what you pay for the materials versus okay all the ready from the shelf things yeah 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 excellent um maybe let's move on from here to talking about the measurements in a bit more detail so unfortunately we don't have proper before measurements we have one screenshot of a uh, of a before measurement do you remember if that was oh it actually says in the bottom it's left plus right speaker plus the sub yeah, um, there's something fishy going on with the frequency response um, because you shouldn't see such a large drop off in the high end. Uh, but at as a as a as a kind of just visual comparison between what it used to be like and what it is now, so obviously a lot happened even in the lowest frequencies. Um, what I want to talk about first of all is just the um, the again the frequency response in the uncalibrated room. Yeah. So you had. Uh, tell me about what was your first impression when you saw that for the first time. Uh, kind of what, what was what was going through your mind when you first saw that. So, um, I saw still some swinging. Yeah. Um, yeah. In in the curve, and uh, so so I I looked for um, flatten it right, becoming kind of linear like um, and more focus on the maximum and minimum peaks right um, seeing okay how much um different uh, what how much is the big the difference because i know this will make a difference in mixing right you you will notice then if there are big differences uh, in the mix so i was a little bit maybe shocked i don't know how to say mm -hmm. it but yeah, i was yeah, like oh, honest, that's okay fine. yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's the small room, and um, I have twenty absorbers now here, and but there's still this swinging. Um, but at the end, I still had hope for okay, because I have treatment, DSP can work also. So probably also can work better, right? Because this DSP will not fix the fundamental problems, but. Um, maybe um, the DSP will help there, and I on purpose because I read. Some people were very satisfied with the DSP with MAR one system. Um, yeah, that I I will buy the their calibration microphone, which I by the way also learned later can use for R uh, R E W right for measurements. Um, and yeah, so um, that was kind of my feeling there. Right. Uh, Maybe first. Yeah. yeah. But maybe what I can throw in is what uh, we briefly discussed before we started recording. One of the things that we can see in the in the uncalibrated version is that the sub is too loud. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's why now looking at the calibrated version, one thing that the software did is just take down the sub significantly uh, in level. Um, it's still a little, it's still a little boosted, but not nearly as much as it was. 
did you did you have a listen to the system before you did, did the calibration or were you looked did you yes. look at that and I mean, you said uh, I did both, right? I did the listen without and with calibration. I can also toggle it in the software, right? I can just like sure. go to, okay, don't use the correction. And the sub, the pressure problem with the base, I only heard it, I have to double check it. I'm not sure, but for now I know I heard it with, before DSP. I had this problem. So I'm probably going to try it out with with DSP. Without the DSP, I still had a, like a little bit doubt. It was better for sure, right? I still had a little bit doubt, but then with the DSP, it became like really mm, consistent in the spectrum, mm -hmm. like the hearing. Um, which, when I look on the measurement, is a little bit, I guess, what I also hear, um, because it does did quite some um, stuff to the. Um, measurement and was actually surprised how much. Like, yeah. I was really, oh, oh, wow, it's like, um, what, sometimes only 10 dB? Isn't that already like studio, close to studio quality, like me medium studio quality? I don't know. Like, I, I was very surprised about that. Um, but the measurement process is actually also, I think, pretty sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So you put it in the listening spot. Um, and it has to be a equilateral triangle. Um, so the with, speakers uh, with the, the yes. with the microphone, yeah, it has to be a perfect with equilateral the triangle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, less than one centimeter. Um, uh, how do you say? Uh, yeah, difference. Difference, right? So it must be very precise. Tolerance. And then mm -hmm. it it does three sweeps. Um, uh, I think left, right, and sub like separately, and you move it to nine different positions afterwards, every time, three times. So you move it 20 centimeter to the left, 20 centimeter, 20 centimeter to the right, uh, back, front, up and down. So it's kind of like trying to also understand the, the, the space and not only the one position, but the space and the different speaker and how they behave. And yeah, I like, I'm actually surprised about the result. It worked pretty well. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's great, yeah. I mean, that also shows um, why I definitely recommend to have some sort of speaker calibration system in place. Yeah, be it uh, obviously Sound ID, SonarWorks, uh, Neumann MA1, the Genelec GLM system, whatever it is, or just doing it manually. Um, because in these rooms, like yours, eleven square meters. That's a small room. There is, and even w and and with the balcony, the double uh, the double door, the door, uh, the other entrance to the room, the door where it is now. It is so difficult to do everything that you should do. There are certain things that you just have to leave out and compromises that you have to make. And as you can tell from the the waterfall, kind of looking at the waterfall, the the impact of the treatment is immense. It's amazing, but at the same time, there's still something we can do with yes. EQ, and it yes. helps. Yeah, and um, so it's 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 all these components working together, and the whole thing is then what gives you what you want. You know. Yes. Um, and, and so it was planned from the beginning like this. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I like a lot of the influence also from the courses and learning more about it was okay. Um, this is the expectation I set. I know, and I'm fine with that. Um, and uh, I, I just had like fingers crossed. Hopefully, with this be worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I mean, without it, probably still usable. I guess like it's it's still like a lot of what has changed. Um, but I'm happy that it's even better with DSP. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this briefly before. I would recommend that you maybe do one more round of calibration, but in the uncalibrated version, you you reduce the sub to a level where it's more in line with the rest of your speakers and you'll realize that the difference between the calibrated and uncalibrated uh, response is going to be less than it is now. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, at the moment, the, the, um, the DSP has to work quite hard to reduce that low end and uh, it, sh it shouldn't have to do that. Um, and you'll get much closer to a usable version uh, just by reducing the volume of the sub. Um, but, uh, but yeah, even then... Um, it's it's a good it's a useful tool to have. It's exactly for this purpose and the point that we're seeing here with your room, 
why it is so useful to have that tool as well. Yeah, and um, so maybe Thomas, I think this is a great point. Maybe let's wrap up here. I have one final question for you, and that is um, for people who want to do this themselves from what you've learned through this process, do you have any recommendations, any words of wisdom to pass on? Uh, what should people focus on? What do you need to be careful of if you want to do this yourself? 80% is enough, I think. Um, very important. Uh, you probably will constantly um, doubt a little bit, ah, does it work or not? Um, because you might reference with 100% solution um and don't spiral into these doubts i think mm -hmm. this is something what happens often i'm also a person who like to likes to do that um if you expect that 80 percent is much 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 better than what you have before um and you're willing to accept that um it will probably be pretty easy to go into execution and do it yourself amazing Thomas, thanks so much for sharing all of this with us. Um, and uh, again, well done on a very, very good looking room. I think you did an excellent job building those absorbers. They look fantastic with the stained wood. And uh, I wish you uh, many years of good fun in the studio. Obviously, again, since it's very fresh for you now, these next th three to six months, I think are going to be very interesting for you. Uh, yes, learning, I'm super excited. Learning what this actually changes and um i think the more the like things pop up over time like the 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 initial difference that you hear is astounding but then you'll still discover things three months down the line six months down the line where you're just like huh this is different this is something this is new new details new perceptions new as your 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 skill develops as your perception your uh, ability to hear things develops because you took such a large step up in the system that gives you the feedback, uh, it's going to be a very interesting progress. So yeah, again, I, I wish you a lot of, of fun these next few months and then hopefully just good, good music making over the next few years. I smiled from the first moment on when I listened to music like and got like a feeling of, of euphoria really yeah. for a long time. Uh, so I'm really curious how this will be. Um, and thank you for the whole course and all, putting like an all-in-one package together. Um, I think it's not, I have not seen it anywhere else, um, especially for the home studio on the whole world, such a good package. And thank you for doing that and having You're me. You're very here. welcome. Thank you for the feedback. Thomas, thanks again. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.